Anytime. Okay, so look, welcome. Thank you very much for everyone for your participation. Mel is doing her final year review. Um, hopefully there's no technical glitches. Do you want to start the presentation, Mel? And as you know, you've got about 20 minutes. Uh, after that, um, the group will disperse and then um, we will have a meeting. The um, panel will have a meeting and then we'll, we'll bring you in later. Okay, so you're ready to start? Okay, no worries. Okay, take it away. Okay, okay, great. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, my name is Melissa Chelikins. And in this presentation, I'm going to provide you with an overview of my thesis research for my final year review. So my thesis is on socioeconomic status, academic self-concept and Indigenous status and looking at the moderation effects on high school dropout. Here are some Indigenous kids. These kids are pretty self-assured. They're pretty smart. They speak a couple of languages. English is not their primary language. They've got strong social connections lots of friends. They're from a remote community in Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. Their community has inadequate housing and health care and quite a bit of intergenerational, intergenerational unemployment. Their school is under-resourced and it's got a high turnover of inexperienced and poorly qualified teachers, often with low expectations. The school is inaccessible in the wet season. So these kids may or may not complete high school. Some local kids do and lots don't. But what if these kids had higher self-confidence at school, higher academic self-concept? Or what if they had access to more resources like books and computers if they came from a higher socioeconomic background? And what other factors might help or hinder them to complete high school? So using a quantitative intersectional approach, can we better understand the joint influence of specific factors on school completion in educationally disadvantaged populations? In this presentation, I'm going to talk about what was my research about. It's about understanding the combined influence of specific social and cultural factors, you know, socioeconomic status and Indigenous status, and academic self-concept in predicting school dropout. I'm going to talk about why does it matter? And it matters because we need a better understanding of what variable variables are important and how they combine to influence predictions of school completion. And this can give us an insight into why gaps in school uh, completion exist for groups experiencing educational disadvantage so we can reduce them. And I'm going to talk about how I've done this research, a bit about the findings. So I've reviewed and tested the joint influences of variables in predicting school dropout through a systematic review, my first study, and through multilinear regression modelling, my second study. But before I talk about my studies, and what they've found, I'm going to talk a little bit about educational disadvantage and why it's important to address it. So what is educational disadvantage? According to Perry 2018, there are three components of educational disadvantage. Opportunities, that's student access to resources, facilities, effective teachers. Experiences, students' relationships and interactions with their teachers, with their peers, their sense of belonging, their experience of classroom discipline. And outcomes, so how the students turn out along with the skills and knowledge that they pick up along the way through the educational process. So differences in educational outcomes between individual students are normal and natural, as individuals have different abilities, different motivations, interests and aspirations. However, differences in educational outcomes become inequalities when they persist between specific groups of students. So educational disadvantage is, an, is a problem in almost all educational systems around the world. It's especially large in Australia, and it hasn't decreased over the last 15 years. So in Australia, there are groups of students that consistently experience education, lower educational opportunities, experiences, and outcomes. 
Um, Thompson and Bortoli, 20, 2008, highlight these students coming from th as coming from three groups. They are students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, Indigenous students, and students who reside in rural and remote areas. So these groups often overlap, resulting in compounded educational disadvantage. And therefore, the students who experience the highest level of educational in in an inequality in Australia, according to Warren and Edwards 2017, are low income Indigenous students who live in regional and remote communities. So an important educational outcome is high school completion. And high school completion is important because those that complete high school have been shown to be happier with higher levels of well-being. They've been shown to be healthier, to have higher levels of em employment, high incomes, make a greater contribution to society through paying more taxes, and ultimately to lead longer, more prosperous and fulfilling lives. Whereas those that don't complete high school have the opposite experience. They have lower incomes, contribute less tax, they cost more to society through greater unemployment and welfare payments, they have poor health outcomes, higher levels of mental health issues, they use more drugs, commit more crimes, spend more time in jail and ultimately die earlier. So in Australia, high school dropout is a problem. 12% of young Australians don't complete high school. 35% of young Indigenous Australians don't complete high school and 57% of young Indigenous Australians in remote areas don't complete high school. And this is the effect of compounding educational disadvantage. So it's these figures that have inspired the federal government's Closing the Gap report, which sets and evaluates national targets for closing the national gap for Indigenous education. And one of the goals of this report was to halve the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous school completion by 2012, uh, sorry, by 2020. So whether a young person will complete high school is dependent on a complex interplay of factors. This thesis reviewed and tested interactions between key variables that lead to school dropout. With a specific focus on the social and cultural factors, socioeconomic status, indigenous status, and also on academic self-concept given its role in driving educational outcomes. So for both of the studies conducted, I used a quantitative intersectionality approach of Els, Quest and Hyde 2016, which considers the interaction between numerous marginalised and more minority statuses. The mechanism through which educational disadvantage leads to dropout is explained by this, the Sen Bordeaux framework, combining a young person's cap stock of capital, which is the work of Bordeaux, and their capabilities, the work of Sen. So this thesis is about understanding what variables are important and how they combine to influence school completion. So we can have more of this. So look at these heroes, finishing high school against the odds. These are students from the Gunbalanya School in Arnhem Land, which is 300 kilometres east of Darwin. And they completed year 12 at the end of last year. Um, these guys didn't even have a senior secondary school until 2012 in their community. And this was a newspaper article from the Illawarra Mercury in January this year. So my first study was a systematic review. Uh, this study aimed to synthesise current research on the relation between academic self-concept and educational outcomes in the literature to identify the moderators of the link and also to identify gaps. So the independent variable was academic self-concept and the outcome variables were outcome variables relating to school completion or school dropout. So we also looked at anything related to school attendance and school engagement and those sort of, those sort of variables. The research questions were what moderates the link between academic self-concept and educational outcomes related to school completion, as I just mentioned? What social and cultural factors moderate this link and how big are their effects? Does socioeconomic status moderate this link and does Indigenous status moderate this link? 
In this study, I followed the Cochrane Systematic Review Methodology by Higgins et al. 2019. I designed the study protocol, including eligibility criteria, conducted searches in four large databases, screened the studies with the help of two colleagues, which took a ridiculous amount of time given there was almost 10,000 studies. I'm currently at the data extraction phase. And once that is complete, um, I'll conduct the data synthesis. And so that study has been progressing well. The initial findings of the systematic review indicate that the moderators between self-concept and the educational outcome variables relating to school dropout uh, were gender, ethnicity, academic ability, adolescent stage, adverse life experiences, Indigenous status, values, belief, values, beliefs. In none of these studies, um, SES was shown to be a moderator. Um, and so given this, and in recognition of the literature um, showing SES as one of the strongest predictors of educational outcomes, I decided to make SES the independent variable in the second study. So my second study is a multilinear regression um, modelling analysis. Um, the objective of it uh, was really to determine whether Indigenous status moderates this link between socioeconomic status and school dropout, whether academic self-concept moderates the link between SES and school dropout, and whether cohort year moderates the link between SES and school dropout. The research questions of this second study are, can Indigenous status overcome the disadvantage of low SES on school completion? In other words, does the benefit of SES for school completion vary between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students? Second question is, can academic self-concept overcome the disadvantage of low SES on school completion? In other words, does the benefit of SES for school completion vary for students with high academic self-concept compared to those with low academic self-concept? Third Research question is, does cohort year influence the disadvantage of low SES on school completion for Indigenous students compared with non-Indigenous students? And the fourth, does cohort year influence the disadvantage of low SES on school completion for students with low academic self-concept compared to those with high academic self-concept? So I tested the moderation effects using the longitudinal surveys of Australian youth which is a large longitudinal and representative Australian series of data sets. I used two cohorts to do this, one starting in 2003, the other starting in 2009. The cohorts run for 10 years um, and commenced when the students were 15 years old and sampling occurred annually. The first wave of data collection for both uh, was the Program for International Student Assessment, PISA, run by the Organisation of Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD. And interestingly, between these two co cohorts, a range of policy, a, a, sorry, a change in policy context occurred across all Australian states and territories, increasing the compulsory school leaving age. And it's possible that the impacts of the policy change, which aimed to increase school completion rates may be affected in the study, in my study findings. So I've almost completed um, the analyses of this study. I'll look a little further into gender, location, and um, obviously do further work interpreting these findings. The study two results are indicated on this slide. Um, it shows the direct effects on school dropout of SES, Indigenous background, academic self-concept and gender, and also the interaction effects as they relate to the study research questions, uh, looking at SES and Indigenous background, the interaction of those, and then also between SES and academic self-concept. And I'll explore the findings relating to those um, in the, the following graphs. So in these graphs, um, you can see the probability of dropout on the y-axis and a, an SES index rating on the x-axis, showing high and low SES at the extremes. In both graphs, 
uh, which show the 2003 cohort and the 2009 cohort, we can see for Indigenous youth, the blue line, the probability of dropout doesn't change much with increased SES. However, for non-Indigenous students, the orange line, we can see that the probability of dropout decreases substantially as SES increases. Uh, in these graphs for the Indigenous students, so the blue graph, and non-Indigenous students, the orange graph, we can see a reduction in the probability of dropout from 2003 to 2009, that is from the dotted line to the striped line. For Indigenous students, in the blue, the reduction in the probability of dropout between cohort years was consistent for all levels of SES. Uh, for non-Indigenous students, the orange graph, the decline in the probability of dropout between years was largest for the lowest SES students, and that decline decreased to virtually nothing for the highest SES group. High SES gained no reduction in probability of dropout from 2003 to 2009. The policy change was implemented across Australia between 2003 and 2009 data sets and coincides with a reduction in the probability of dropout for all students except non-Indigenous high SES students. So the implications of this uh, may suggest that dropout related interventions or policies may be more effective for Indigenous students across the board and for non-Indigenous low SES students. So for everyone, but not non-Indigenous high SES groups. Uh, in these graphs, we can see quite a reduction in the probability of dropout from low self-concept, that's the pink line, to high self-concept, the red line, showing that across all SES groups, higher self-concept reduces the probability of dropout. In both graphs, we can see that self-concept has a greater impact in reducing the probability of dropout for low SES students and the influence reduces as SES increases. So... If you have low SES, self-concept is quite protective and it's less protective for higher SES as they're already protected. The implication of this may be that uh, self-concept approaches may be more effective when targeting low SES groups rather than high. Uh, with the first graph here, the pink one for low, low self-concept, uh, low confidence at school. The probability of dropout for this group reduces from 2003 to 2009. It's particularly evident for the students with the lowest SES where the largest reduction in the probability of dropout occur. The reductions in the probability of dropout between cohort years decreases as student SES increases and this could be due to the policy change implemented between the two cohorts. For the second graph in red showing students with high academic self-concept, there's no reduction in the probability of dropout from 2003 to 2009. Actually, we can see that the lines are inverted, which is quite interesting. For students with the lowest SES, there was no change in the probability of dropout between cohort years. While for students with high SES, the probability, probability of dropout actually appears to have increased in 2009 after the policy was implemented. Um, and so that is the, can't easily be explained through the policy. And I might have to think a bit more about what might be going on there. So in this presentation, I have talked about what my research is about. It's about enhancing the understanding of how social and cultural factors, SES, Indigenous status, along with academic self-concept, jointly influence predictions of school dropout. I've talked about why this is important research. It seems that socioeconomic status and Indigenous status and academic self-concept are important variables, which when combined influence predictions of high school completion differently. And this knowledge may be useful in addressing and decreasing educational disadvantage. And I've also talked about how the research was conducted with a systematic review and for the first study and for the second study, multilinear regression modelling, and a bit about the findings of these studies to date. Uh, so that's the end of my presentation. And oh my goodness, I have run one minute under time. So thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm very appreci 
appreciative of your effort. Uh, thank you very much to my supervisors for all their effort and support. And I was wondering if there are any questions.